Oh, bit of heather bash in here. Oh, I don't know if you can see me. <laughs> Let me see if I can get myself into shot without falling down this hillside. Right, <laughs> here I am. A what a wonderful, wonderful place I'm in today. And this waterfall behind me marks the start of a great, great, well, a walk that I've got some unfinished business with, to be honest with you. And uh, yeah, that, that person down there is actually my wife, and she's been very kind. And she's going to be staying in the van while I go up this mountain, which I've got, uh, yeah, I, I just need to go back. And there's a couple of reasons why I need to go back to it, which I'll explain later on. But for now, I'm going to take some pictures of the waterfall. Then I'm going to try and get off this boggy ground onto the ridge, and I'll report back a wee bit later on. Right, let's go. <laughs> ah! So after a fair bit of bog trotting, I made it on to some higher ground and as I got higher the views also opened up as well as the ground getting drier beneath my feet and I was certainly glad of that because that bog at the start was just horrendous. And look at those views behind me and it was only going to get better as the day went on. Haha, -ha, yes, the summit, but this is not the true summit, this is the halfway summit, <laughs> and it's breezy, and uh, I can see the bulk of the main mountain now behind me, and I'm going to spin you around and show you what it is, and it's a mountain called Garven, up here behind me, doesn't it look magnificent, and the reason that I want to go back here is I had a a mini winter epic here a few years ago and um, I got up here to this this part of the hill in the winter it was beautiful sunny weather there was lots of snow on the ground which was good because the bit of this walked over was all fro uh, frozen and that first three or four hundred meters is absolutely about as bad a bog a bog walk that I've done in such a, <laughs> such a long time so I was glad back then that it was frozen but anyway back to the story when I got up here, uh, the, uh, the weather started to change and there was snow coming in from the north and the, the blizzard hit me just as I got to the top but the, the last 200 metres or so were along this, it was deep, soft, unconsolidated snow which has formed into this, this almost perfect crest on the ridge and I couldn't see any of the rocks underneath it so it was proper, proper gnarly for me anyway and I really wanted to go back and see what it was like without the snow in the summer because in the guidebooks it says it's a mild scramble and not nearly as bad as what it was when the, the conditions were like they were when I was up there so I'm really keen to get up there. Anyway this top's probably I think it's 450 metres, 500 metres. I tell you what just like the day when I came up in the winter there's a keen northerly breeze blowing and for June it's a bit cold so I'm going to get my hat on, my thicker jacket on and also my sunglasses <laughs> and then I'll crack on. Oh, the sun's coming out. Got my glasses out, sunglasses out, which is always a good sign, but that wind is picking up. Could be a bit, uh, well, we'll see if it's really windy in that ridge. Is there anything like it was when I was up in winter? I'll not be getting to the top, but I'll assess it when I get up there. I'm really looking forward to this next part when I head on to the, uh, into the black cooling, because we're on the red cooling at the moment, as I probably said if you saw the video the last time I did one. It's time to head in the red cold, so yeah, I'm just gonna get my butt stuff and then we'll be going. Yeah, let's go. Isn't this just spectacular? Look at the views over my back here. That's the Coolin Ridge. What a place, anyway. The Coolin Ridge is um, it's a black Coolin, and as I said earlier on, this is a, this is definitely black Coolin or a black Coolin mountain. I'm on now. The, uh, the the ground conditions are completely different to when I was coming up the uh, the first top which is very, very more, uh, there's more vegetation, more green, more rounded. This is, 
Yeah, this is definitely a, a sky mountain. Absolutely beautiful. Yeehaw! Ooh. So now that I was on the Black Coolin, the views were spectacular over to the ridge. And as I got higher up on the mountain, the amount of vegetation became less and less, and there was more of that black gabbro rock for my hands to get stuck onto. Oh, I'll tell you, coming up here in the summer, <laughs> though it doesn't feel like summer, it's a bit chilly. Forecast snow on the tops tomorrow. Anyway, um, what a different feel it's got to when I came up the last time, and this was all covered in snow, so everything that's black and rocky beneath my feet was white and icy <laughs> and uh, you know it was solid it, you know, it was almost easier with the crampons on until I got to the top but in this bit anyway because at the moment everything moves it's all scree and rock whereas when I came up in the winter any scoured bits where there wasn't any snow which wasn't many bits the, the rocks were all, were all frozen together with ice and the rest of it was all snow so completely different feeling mountain but I've stopped here because one there's a wee bit of shelter from a <laughs> A rocky spur over here, and two, this view behind me, I don't know if you can see it This view of, this is Marsco over here And then over to the red coolins with Glameg at the back And I think one of my favourite ever photographs was taken from round about here On that day when the weather changed and it was One of those moments when uh, I looked behind me and the, these hills were all white with snow But the sun was coming in from the south and illuminating them but behind them, those storm clouds were gathering to the north and starting to move in. So you had that contrast of the dark skies and the sunlit white mountains. It's, to this day, it's still my screensaver <laughs> on my PC. I'll, I'll put, put some footage up just now of it, but that was just a fantastic shot. Still a lovely shot today to be had, but not quite as nice as it was when it was snow covered. Anyway, I'm about another 200 metres vertically, so I better keep going. I need to get back to my wife in the van. I told her I'd be about three hours and we're at two and a half hours now. <laughs> Too much stopping and talking to the camera. Right, I'll report back in a wee while. Let's get to the top. What a place. Nothing quite like the cooling in sky. Magical. Right. Nearly there. You can see now the summit of Garven and it's this final part that was very, very hairy the last time I was here. So I'm really keen, there's a wee easy scramble up onto the top of the ridge. And then from there I'm really keen to see uh, to see what it's like in uh, summer conditions, so let's get up there and we'll see what it's like. Got the action cam out now because it's Getting a bit more scrambly. Whew. Oh yeah. Look at this. Yeehaw! I remember this bit. Whew. Right, I've got the um the big camera out. But I'm now, I remember this bit so well and I'm now on that, the very start of the bit of the ridge, the summit ridge which in the winter was quite hairy and I'm quite keen to see what's just over here but I remember getting ice axe out and coming over to this view which I'm going to spin you around to in just a minute and I was blown away with it back in that winter and I tell you what, I'm just as in awe of this view and this mountain ahead of me Look at that! That's Blaven and clack glass, wow! I think the cloud was just coming in the last time I was here and I couldn't quite see that, but what a view! Just, it's just fantastic with the, the sea behind it Oh! Absolutely stunning! This is just another reason I love sky is the, the mountains and the sea and the islands It's just a special place, so anyway let's shut up, let's go 
and go into the fridge and just see if it's as gnarly as it was <laughs> all those years ago in the winter. Right, let's do it. Hop, oh, skipping the jump. So I was now finally on that final ridge which pulls you up to the summit of Garven and it was some lovely, easy, nice scrambling. A complete contrast to what it had been like those years ago when there was a covering of fresh snow on it and I was well, scrambling around trying to get ice axe, uh, ice axe placements in the soft snow. Today it was just a delight. Although the wind was howling and I did have to be a little bit careful because it certainly wasn't a place to lose your footing. Wow. Well, this is delightful. Grade 1 scrambling. The only thing I've got to be careful of is the wind and also there's some basalt dikes running through the nice sticky gabbro. <laughs> but what a place! What a different place, which I'll come on to explain in just a minute. But the summit is just here. Woo! Ah, oh, yes. Woo -ho -ho -ho! Here I am on the summit of Garvan. Wow. Well, I've managed to answer my question. There's some easy scrambling along there, not a place to trip. But what a difference. Uh, the, it's a completely different mountain today. and comparison to what it was back <laughs> in that winter traverse especially that last ridge it was it took me 10 minutes maximum to get along there and I think it was probably about 40 minutes <laughs> in that snow but what a viewpoint I've got a better view now because when I got here the last time the blizzard was starting to roll in the clouds were lowering but I'm going to do a 360 with the camera in just a minute and show you the views I mean, again, I've talked about Blaven and Clark Glass. I can see over to the mainland, Egg and Rum, the Coolin Ridge, Marsco, the Red Coolin. This route actually drops down here and goes on to another hill called Belly. Don't know if that's how you pronounce it. Apologies if it's not. But I'm not going to do that today. I've got to get back to my wife. <laughs> I'm already about half an hour behind uh, schedule. Well, behind the time I said I'd be back at the van. <laughs> But yeah, you can do a horseshoe here, and that, I'm not going to do that today, but that just gives me an excuse to come back a, th a, third, a third time to do this, uh, this hill with the other one joined in, but what a viewpoint. Absolutely glorious. I'm going to sit up here for 10 minutes and then get back down, go back down the way I came, but can't wipe this smile off my face. <laughs> I love it. Almost, uh, strangely enough, <laughs> very similar to what happened uh, when I was up here in those gnarly conditions. Is the clouds coming from nowhere, and uh, I don't know if you can make it out. It's, it's coming in, uh, obscuring the views. I've, I've had a good 20 minutes up here with some fantastic views over to Blaven, and I just sat, did a wee bit of footage, but just enjoying it really. But now that the weather's in the slide, it's uh, past tea time. I need to get back, and I've got some. Wait till you see 
what uh, I'm doing tonight for my yeah for my accommodation. It's not the van, and it's not a, it's not the tent. I'll give you that much of a clue, but uh, yeah, you'll see probably pretty shortly. But an hour or two for me. I'm going to uh, I'm going to have to work work hard to get some brownie points back because I'm now an hour <laughs> an hour behind schedule. So let's get off this hill before it clags in completely. Wow, let's go. So I about turned from the summit and just headed back down the way I'd came. I was keen to get off the mountain before the clag came in. And care still required because I still had to go along that that same narrow ledge which led me to the summit. It was the same route back off and again you don't want to fall here so I just took my time and uh, enjoyed the views before dropping down the mountain a little bit further and picking up the path back towards the car. I was keen to get back down as I was running a fair bit behind schedule and I was really really looking forward to getting back to the accommodation that we treated ourselves to on this trip. After getting back down to the van and making my excuses slash apologies to my wife, it was soon time to head back to that uh, wee treat that we'd uh, decided to give ourselves. So we headed back off Sky and back to the mainland and our accommodation for the evening wasn't too far from Sky, still had some lovely sea views and we soon arrived at the accommodation for the evening. Take a look at the view. Right, just an action cam, we're um, back in the in the lodge, a bit of luxury, don't do this very often, but yeah, I thought I'd give you a wee tour. Um, yeah, there's Hamish, the Highland Goo, this is just like a outdoor, I don't know, utility area. And then in here, this is the, the room. One thing I really like is this map, look at that, on the wall, that's fantastic. That's where we are there, staying there, and this is where I was today, where are we? Yeah, Garvin there. But the uh, real beauty about this place, what do you see this? Put it here. Oh, there's a telly, lovely fire there, but look at this view, wow. Isn't that just fabulous? Absolutely beautiful. That's looking down to the hills of Glen Shee. Beautiful. Now let's go through here, and we are away to go out there into the uh, hot tub in a bit. But the bedroom views aren't too bad either. Look at that, lovely. Not too bad, is it? And uh, the bathroom's lovely as well. Just into the bathroom there. Nice big bathroom. So there you go. That's your tour. Three walks for you. Right, get to the hot tub and have a beer. Makes a change from uh, back to the tent and try to dry things out. <laughs> <laughs> 